Welcome, and follow me as a Samsung Galaxy S23 FE, and today I will show you a couple tweaks and tricks you can do on this device. So, starting off, we're gonna open up our settings, and in here we're gonna begin by navigating into the display section, where we can find a bunch of different things. Starting off with the light and dark mode. Now, by default, the device will probably be in light mode, so if you want to permanently switch it to dark mode, you can do so right over here. Uh, but I highly recommend checking out the other option associated with dark mode, which is the dark mode settings. And here you can select it to automatically switch to either one of those modes based on time of day. And you can set it either from sunset to sunrise or on a custom schedule. So you can choose the start and end time uh, of each mode. Now, moving on into the other option, it's going to be the motion smoothness. This is basically the refresh rate of the device. Now, this phone can run at 120 hertz, which will drain your battery a little bit quicker if you tend to use your device quite often. Now, if you, for instance, are going to be doing a lot of reading on your device, uh, I do recommend probably changing it to standard because this will not really affect the viewing experience while it's going to affect the battery life a little bit. So you can then use your device for a little bit longer. And additionally, just for general battery uh, saving purposes, we could change it to standard. This will give you a better screen on time. But for everyone else who just wants to have nice smooth motion and it doesn't really just completely hammer their device constantly using the display, then probably adaptive will be better because it's gonna give you this nice smooth motion when scrolling up and down. Now, below that we have screen mode, which by default, I believe it should be in vivid mode. That's what usually is enabled by default on Samsung's. Uh, but I personally find it to be overdone, so I like to change it to natural. This will tone down the colors a little bit. It might not be as visible on this example, but here uh, you can see it does have a quite a significant difference in terms of how saturated the colors are. And when it comes down to Samsung, I personally believe they are overdoing them beyond any kind of reason. So I do like the natural look uh, to be selected here. Now, moving on into other options, we have the edge, edge panel. We can turn it off right here and we can also edit it in here, uh, but the general access to it would be by swiping from the top right side somewhere along right here. Now on the video, it's probably very hard to see, but you can see this kind of like tiny little white bar right here. That's basically the edge panel. So you can customize it in the settings. Uh, you can add a different handle, handle meaning what how this looks like. So you can change the tra transparency, size, colors, and all that stuff. Uh, then going back, we have um, panels, which allows you to well, later. I don't want to update, which allows you to add more panels in here. You can also access uh, Galaxy Store and get more from there if you want. Uh, keep in mind that some of the ones in Galaxy Store, the better ones that you probably would actually find useful, unlike most of them, uh, will be most likely paid. Now, they're not expensive. They're about like 99 cents or something along those lines. So manageable. But for instance, if you already paid uh, for your device like a thousand, uh, paying 99 cents for a side panel seems to be just an insult, I would say. So it should be all free in my opinion. But like I said, if you find one that you really feel like you want, I uh, can just fork up the 99 cents and get more. I'm not really going to touch upon those. I personally use uh, the app panel only. I tried using the weather one, but I found out, found at least in my case, that uh, weather takes way too long to load. So when you whip out the panel, if I enable it, just to showcase, it will probably work fine right now. But when you get the panel and then you swipe on it, it will give you weather. Now, first time it should be fine. If you open up the next day, it's still going to show you 5C, for instance, which then you need to reload it by swiping down. And I found that reloading it just takes way too long. So for me, it's faster to not bother with this, open up weather and get automatically a correct uh, weather forecast rather than opening this up, having to reload and wait for it to actually load the info. So just a, just a little bit of an info about this. If you're planning to use this kind of feature, probably not. This, this one probably isn't the best option. But when it comes down to the apps itself, uh, these are great. So you can edit how many apps are visible right here. Uh, so let's just click on edit button and this will then show you all the apps that you have installed right now. And you can just start spamming 
spam adding them you don't really have any kind of limit to them i think it just will allow you to just scroll down on it so as you can see right now it's not scrollable yet but it should be scrollable now and you can see it's now scrollable now additional uh, features of this will allow you to also add split screen application combinations so if i were to for instance open up something like youtube now as you can see you can drag the apps out of there and you can open them up in split screen so you can you can drop it on top bottom or middle which will open it up in a pop-up view uh, but let's go into the split screen hold it boom that's one and let's do chrome as the other one and there we go and now we have two different applications now when you go home you should have there we go this application or this kind of like combo show up right here and what you can do is grab it and then drag it below here to add it to applications that will not be changed these do change based on what you frequently use or the most recent applications that's why this was visible in there but once you drag it below this little little dotted line they will stay here permanently and from here you can just simply tap on it and it will open up your uh, app combination i do want to clarify one thing sometimes i'm not exactly sure what it is based on sometimes it just won't work so you might have added your app combination and when you try to open it up it might not load uh, in case of this kind of preset it seems to be working fine uh, but i have tested it out on different samsung devices and it doesn't always work i'm not sure if this is just a fault of applications not wanting to cooperate with this feature or if it's just a fault of samsung so i do want to also add that it allows you to split screen these applications but when you try to reopen them up so when you have like a combo particularly a three up combo that isn't actually supported on here it's going to be on a bigger devices like tablets or foldables uh, then that's where you would have the problem where it just doesn't want to open it up even though it was open you close these applications and you want to really relaunch them like this using this kind of shortcut and it just doesn't want to open them up nothing happens when you press on it so just want to clarify this if this is something that is happening to you i still have no idea what it's causing this because it seems to be kind of random okay now moving on uh we're gonna navigate into the settings again and then we're gonna go down to general management i believe it is and i'm looking for gesture navigation which actually could have been probably in display now that i think about it display oh yeah there we go navigation bar so here you can select either button navigation, which I have been using for this video, or gesture navigation, which is what I'm going to enable right now. And you also have the addition to hide this little bar at the bottom by turning off gesture hints. Though I do want to clarify this, when you have this enabled, personally I found it that if I'm using a third party launcher, it makes the gestures much more inaccurate. So I might be swiping uh, up several times before the device will actually you know go home as an example and it is pretty annoying now that primarily affects the uh, home gesture it doesn't affect the swipe from sides to go back so i'm not exactly sure what is causing this it's it's samsung things obviously they don't want you to use other uh, other launchers as uh, as it's been proven by them for instance disabling the uh, smart uh, dock uh, like on the foldable devices if you're using a third-party launcher which if i'm pretty sure using like default google device also foldable it doesn't have much problem just samsung decides to give you crap for using it because i don't know maybe they can cut their data or whatever but it is pretty annoying so just want to mention that that samsung does seem to be gimping some of the features if you're not using their launcher they will work worse and uh if you find out that for instance the home gesture doesn't really work for you you can just re-enable the, uh, the gesture hint and it should start working fine. Now, moving on, uh, another thing that I want to show you is the, uh, the power button options. Now, Samsung started to call this side button because apparently we don't have more than one button on the side. So this is the side button, but these aren't on the side. No, no, no. So these are volume buttons. So I am taking a piss at this because it's kind of ridiculous, but uh, anyway, uh, you'll probably experience that 
holding your power button will most likely bring out Bixby, which if you're anything like me, I personally hate Bixby. It's the most atrocious thing that shows up and I do have more use of a power button than I do of a Bixby, which says a lot. So if you want to get that back, meaning the power button, you would navigate to advanced features because apparently that is an advanced feature and then navigate to side button because apparently there's no more than one side side mounted button and here you have the press and hold option and you have wake up bixby or power off menu which you can change right over here and now when you hold it it gives you this option so great now one last thing that i wanted to show you uh, or kind of point you towards uh, though I won't be able to show it fully is the adopt sound now this will work if you have some kind of earbuds headphones uh, you can set this up and you do so by going into the sound and a vibration then scrolling down to sound quality and effects and here you have the toggle for adopt sound and then you can click on this and select allow and you have three different options of age ranges. You have a 30 or under 30, 30 to 60 and 60 and over. Now what this refers to is basically the most common hearing loss between this kind of age groups. And what this feature aims to do is simply mitigate that by boosting these frequencies that you would lose hearing to and making them louder, meaning you can hear them again. So it's a pretty decent option to have enabled. Now where this actually will thrive even better is if you have some kind of less um, favorable pair of earbuds, for instance, there might not be like the best. So the way this works is you can do personalized uh, option. Now this is basically an equalizer, so you can create your own. And the way you do so is by putting your earbuds in and then going through the test, it will start just uh, giving you sounds either from left or right here and they will vary in different frequencies and you just need to select if you can hear it or not and depending on what you will select it will then create a custom equalizer now the way this will benefit you is if you have a lower quality earbuds obviously whatever sound it might be playing it might not be the earbud themselves might not be good enough to play this sound so you won't be able to hear it just because the earbud isn't able to actually give you a reasonable volume for that sound because it's not like equalized for it and by going through this you actually might gain that sound because it's going to start playing louder now so if your earbud struggled with some kind of like lower frequency or higher you might actually improve the sound quality of your buds which is a very beneficial thing and just like a 20 second setup uh, which once you set it up you don't have to do anything extra you can just select each one of those uh, obviously there will be a new one that will show up here once you create your own and it will automatically be selected and it will be applied to everything that is on the device youtube music uh, net uh, netflix whatever you're doing whatever sound will be playing it will be applied to it now this will only work with uh connected audio device so your earbuds or headphones it will not work with the speakers so i just wanted to clarify that as well so anyway that would basically conclude the tweaks and the tricks that i want to show you and if you found this video helpful don't forget to hit like subscribe and thanks for watching